Good, good evening, everyone. I'm Michael Marcelli. I'm the finance director at UCAP, and my colleague Bryn is joining me. Bryn, want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Bryn Lemon, and I'm the assistant director of alumni engagement and scholarships at UCEAP. And a proud alum of our programs. <laughs> I am indeed. I am indeed. I studied in Edinburgh, just as Julie is thinking about doing. Excellent. A lot of great options for you just to show with you, and hopefully you've seen some of our other great sessions with all of our colleagues, both in the campuses and here at the system-wide office. Uh, this is a session devoted to student finances, so please ask any questions you like. We're going to go through some of the locations where it's more affordable for you to go abroad than to stay domestically at your home you see and save some money based on currency differentials, uh, housing costs, food costs, and those kinds of things. And then I'll hand it over to Bryn, who works in our alumni development unit, and talk about some of the scholarships that we have. Um, and again, we're great to have you, and we'll be recording this and posting this uh, live for any of your friends who aren't able to, to make it. So our session is called, Should I Stay or Should I Go? Um, based on facts that are provided to us by the UC campuses, currently the cost of attendance for the University of California, this is a weighted average based on certain areas like the Bay where Berkeley is versus San Diego or River, Riverview, Riverside. Uh, it's about $41,000 per year. That's the all-in cost, your tuition, your housing, your food costs, labs, materials, and all those kinds of things. With a UCA EAP participant budget, we're covering all of those things. So it's an apples to apples comparison of what it would cost you while you go abroad, in addition to the cost of the flight for you leaving California and returning back. So the student budget that you'll take a look at is across our 400 different options in 40 different countries with over 125 host institutions that you can go to for summer programs, year long, semester and quarter length. These options we're covering and you're inclusive of all the passport and visa fees and the other living expenses that you may have within the country such as laundry and other tickets or other transportation orientation materials. So it's a very comprehensive cost estimate that we provide to you or future participants on our programs. When it comes to the financial aid packaging, if you're a student on UC Grant, for instance, you will be packaged in a very similar package when you go with us abroad for either summer or for semester or year long length, depending on your duration that you choose, that meets your academic needs and your, your calendaring. So if you're a student that's on, um, say, loans, the loans will travel with you. If you're a student that finances this through cash or through other means, those will be the same way that you finance your participation on EAP programs. Um, in this presentation, uh, we are not including your UC campus fees because those are going to vary wildly between what Berkeley or say an Irvine has. Um, if you're a graduate student looking for opportunities on study abroad, we do not include your specific graduate fees for your individual college. But if you do to participate, we will factor that into your financial aid bucket. And for the non-resident students from abroad or from other states, these calculations do not include the extra thirty thousand dollars that those students pay to go to the UC. But we will, once you you will pay those when you go on our abroad. But for this example, we're showing the eighty percent of students who are California residents and what they would pay here domestically in California. So semester length participation is a very popular segment for students when they go abroad, particularly fall semester. If you're a quarter student campus like UCLA or UC Santa Barbara, you are still eligible to go on semester length programs. And we get feedback from some students, particularly STEM students, that they like having the extra course load and units earned as a semester length student for fall. And it gives them the ability to study more for their professional graduate school exams when it comes to their return back for winter and spring quarters. So in this example here, um, if you were to become a, a semester length student in our great partner Lund University, which we a number of years ago celebrate our 50th anniversary with that institution, you would save almost $6,600 being a fall semester participant versus what it would cost you as a fall semester student here domestically. Again, this is based on currency differentials, cost of living being more affordable abroad than it is here in the state of California. And we have some of the tremendous partners we have, such as um, a global studies partner in Japan, you would save over 6,000. Thomas at University in Thailand, over 5,000 in savings. Uh, Singapore and New Zealand and in France. So we're trying to give you just a, a cross section of many different countries on several different continents. Of the 400 options that we have for students, 
over 30% of them have savings for you if you were to go abroad. So those are the semester length. And again, these are inclusive of the cost of your flight there and back, but would not include any additional travel that students partake in while they're abroad. For the, for the year-long students, here's some examples of some savings um, in US currencies. So Uppsala University in Sweden, you'd save over $14,000. You're still paying UC tuition and fees. You're still paying um, other fees that you have for course materials and those things, but over $14,000 in savings for a, a full year long participation. In Hong Kong, you'd save over 11,000. At Aarhus University in Denmark, over oh, nearly $11,000 in savings. Our tremendous partner in Ghana, we've had a long standing relationship with, you'd save nearly over $9,000. And Yonsei University, which is an incredibly popular destination for so many of the UC students, you'd save almost $7,400 for a year-long participation. One of the many great reasons about going on an EAP program is that we are the system-wide provider for study abroad. So on our programs, you'll meet many students from UCLA, UC Berkeley, UC Santa Barbara during your time with us. In addition, if you chose a host institution partner, you'd be taking courses with all the international students from that host institution. And in the example of Yonsei, they're a tremendous hub of so many different countries who accept students. So you'll meet students from Europe, from Asia, from Australia, New Zealand, from South America, from Africa. And we have, we really pride ourselves on some of the partnerships we have with immersion partners that really take care of a lot of great international students such as yourselves as you're contemplating going with us on abroad during some part of your, your UC time. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Bryn for her segment. And then if there's any questions, feel free to pop into the chat or when the our presentation's over with, um, we can do it verbally or in writing. Excellent. All right, everyone. So as I mentioned, I am in charge of our scholarships portfolio here at the System Wide Office. And all of the photographs that you see within the presentation today are from our students in the recent years. So Michael, if you can skip this one here. Bear with me one moment. Yeah, take your time. Yeah, all these students are previous scholarship recipients. As Michael mentioned, I am also a previous participant of our programs. I'm an alumna of our uh, University of Edinburgh program. I studied there for a year uh, when I was an undergraduate at UC Santa Barbara. And then I actually moved back there to work in our office there for a year following my graduation. So I'm deeply passionate about study abroad and access to it. So I'm really excited to see you all here in the audience. Here you'll see my contact information. I have two email addresses there. One is my um, primary account and one is our scholarship specific account. So if you have any questions following the presentation, feel free to email me with them. So Michael, you hit skip. So um, this is a general overview of the breakdown of our portfolio at the system wide office. We offer a overarching award called the Global Scholarship, which you may have previously heard referred to as the Promise Award. We have changed that terminology now. So it is called the Global Scholarship. This is the award that you will apply to to get your application in our system. Once you're in our system, um, if you qualify for specific named awards, you may be considered automatically for those opportunities. And additionally, we do offer year-long awards um, entitled the Dutton Hager Scholarship, the Chris Borton Memorial Scholarship, as well as an extension scholarship called the Paul Dutton Hager Extension Scholarship. And we have added a new award to our portfolio, which is very exciting, which is called the Founders Prize in Entrepreneurship. And we'll get into what all of these mean in a little bit. If you could type into the chat, if anyone is considering studying for a year, that would be very helpful information for me. I have some slides on year-long study but I got the sense most of our participants are thinking about a semester. So if you are thinking about a year, please let me know. Finally, after you return, we do offer three different program, uh, three different scholarships, in including the internship awards, undergraduate research awards, and graduate school scholarships. I won't go into great detail about those today because we do have a condensed presentation, um, but I am happy to answer questions about those independently. And I see that Julia is considering studying abroad for a year. That's so exciting. I'm so happy to hear that. Okay, then we'll address those awards in a bit of detail later on. So Michael, will you hit click, please? Excellent. So um, let's start off by verifying that UCEAP has no citizenship, residency, or other eligibility requirements. So if you are a UC student studying abroad on UCEAP, then you are eligible for a scholarship. So. Um, this is important to know. Anyone is welcome to apply. We encourage everyone to apply by the correct deadline. So, Michael, will you hit continue, please? 
Okay, so speaking of deadlines, so this is the breakdown for our UCEAP Global Scholarship. We offer $1,000 scholarships in the summer, $2,000 scholarships for quarter, semester, or year-long study. And when we say year, it's $2,000 each semester that you were abroad that year. So you do need to apply each term in order to qualify for the Global Scholarship. For our year-long awards, it will be a single application that will carry you through the entire year if you are selected as a candidate there. You must submit your application by 11.59 p.m. on the due date. So um, please ensure that you start your application early and get it in as, um, as timely as possible. Below, you'll see a breakdown of our deadlines here. So our summer application opens January 15th and it closes February 15th. Our fall and year application opens again on January 15th, but it will close on March 15th. So you have a bit more time to submit that material. And finally, our spring and year application opens on August 15th and will close on September 15th. So um, we'd always do these at least a, a quarter in advance, you know, uh, well in advance so that we make sure that anyone who's selected for our awards knows that they're getting them and are excited to go on our programs. Michael, will you continue, please? Excellent. So this is a breakdown of the application for the Global Scholarship. It will include a form where you put in your personal demographic information, as well as a statement of purpose, which is 750 words. The link to apply is there. Um, you can actually type in that link now and you'll be able to see the application portal. You won't be able to begin an application because we are not within one of our application cycles at the moment, but you're welcome to check out the opportunities available on the site. You'll be able to see all the questions in advance, as well as all the statements um, of purpose so that you are prepared to create your application when you're ready. Michael, will you continue, please? This is just a look at what the form um, will look like when you log into the site. You'll put in your personal information, and on the left-hand side, it will recommend opportunities for you. We'll go ahead and click forward here. And uh, once you have put in your personal information, it will, again, recommend specific opportunities for you. So in this example, I'm only going abroad for a semester. I will apply to the Global Scholarship and then my application once in the system. Let's say I'm going abroad to Italy. It will consider me for any Italy-specific scholarships once my Global Scholarship has been submitted. We'll go ahead and skip to the next slide now. And let's keep going. Okay, so the statement of purpose here. Uh, I'm just gonna read out our statement of purpose quickly. So it is 750 words and it begins with, what sparked your interest in studying abroad? How will your program abroad relate to your academic career and or personal goals? What academic preparation have you done for your program? If you are a student with financial need, please discuss how this has impacted your decision to study abroad. What do you hope to experience while abroad? How do you anticipate you will embrace challenges abroad? How do you hope to grow personally while abroad? And finally, if you are a student who identifies with a cohort that is traditionally underrepresented on study abroad programs, please discuss how this has impacted your decision to study abroad. Traditionally underrepresented students on UC EAP programs include, but are not limited to, students who have transferred to a UC from a community college or state university, veterans, first-generation college students, students on programs where the majority of classes are taught in a language other than English, and students who spend a full year abroad. So it's a large prompt. We don't anticipate that you will address every element of the prompt. However, these are guiding uh, factors here. So I would recommend reading through them, trying to address as many as you can, focusing on the ones that apply most deeply to your experience and your journey and your hopes for your program. Uh, basically, what we really wanna see is that you've done a lot of research about the program you're going to study on and that your goals align with that program well. So if we can move forward, Michael. Um, award selection is based on um, academic merit and integration of your selected UCEAP program into a student's academic and career goals as demonstrated in a personal statement. So as I was mentioning, the main thing that we wanna see is that a student has done research and has picked a really great program for their goals. You know, We wanna see intentionality and we wanna see that you are um, excited about the opportunities that your program will present to you that are not available at your home UC. Students with financial need or who are traditionally underrepresented on UC EAP programs should definitely make this known within their statement. Um, and be sure that you make your statement memorable. So be specific about your background and your reasons for going abroad. We're looking for students who have found programs that match their goals, 
Um, stay away from cliches about travel and other cultures. It's really easy to say that you're excited to travel um, and that you picked Berlin as a central hub for studying all, uh, traveling all across Europe, which is wonderful. But we really wanna make sure that you picked your home, you know, uh, host country for a reason. So let's say that host country is Edinburgh. You picked it because of the nature, you picked it because of the literature or what have you, um, is Scotland, excuse me. Michael, will you move back one slide? I think we might have skipped one. Let's see. If possible, if not, that's okay. We can move forward. Sorry, one moment. My keyboard's not responding. One moment. That's okay, no problem. So uh, one of the really great ways to make your application memorable is to really make sure that we know who you are as a student. Um, what is the most exciting thing about you as a student? What have you done at your UC campus to make you stand out and to um, get you excited and prepared for your for your program? Excellent. Okay, thank you, Michael. I think we I think we addressed this, so we can move forward there. And um, please emphasize time spent in your host country versus a chance to travel on the weekends. And again, if you're a member of an underrepresented group and study abroad, please ensure that you explain this to the extent that you are comfortable. We can move forward here. Once you are selected, if you are selected for a scholarship, then you will be required to submit a thank you letter to the donor of your award, as well as complete a two-page report upon return and submit some photographs to us so we can put them in these lovely presentations here. <laughs> so we'll move forward here. Uh, this is just an overview of some of the additional named awards that we have in our system. So uh, if you go onto our UCEAP website, uh, but you saw earlier uh, the link that was above that will give you access to all of these lists of opportunities here. And if you go to paying for study abroad on our main UCEAP website, it'll link you to the scholarship opportunities and you'll be able to see a breakdown here. So we can move forward here, Michael. And these are just, again, more memorial scholarships available specific to certain regions. And we'll keep going here. And finally, some summer specific awards to programs in Italy. So if you're thinking about studying abroad in Italy, uh, summer is a good chance to do it because we have a few extra scholarships available to students studying abroad in Italy. We'll keep going here. Uh, the Founders Prize in Education and Entrepreneurship is a wonderful new opportunity for students studying abroad um, in London for the Business and Entrepreneurship Program. I'm not going to go into great detail about it, but if that does sound like an intriguing program to you, I do recommend you go to our website and check out more information about the Founders Prize because it is a wonderful $5,000 award that is um, new this year. So we're excited to offer it to incoming students. We'll keep going, Michael, here. And our year-long award portfolio here. So we have our Dutt Neighbor Scholarship at $5,000 each. We offer 30 awards each year as well as our Chris Borton Memorial Scholarship, $8,000 each, and our Paul Dunhaver Extension Award for students who go abroad in the fall and consider extending to spring. So let's say that you aren't quite positive that you wanna go for a year, but you wanna leave that option open. There is a, a box that you can check on your application to make that possible. And then if you do decide to extend, you can apply for this award and you can get um, additional funding for choosing to stay for the full year abroad. So we can keep going here. I highly recommend studying abroad for the year if you have the opportunity. I loved studying abroad for the year. It definitely made all the difference for me. But if you could only go for a semester or a summer, that's fine too. Let's talk about combining funding. So funding from the UCAP Global Scholarship cannot be combined with funding uh, from named awards. So the Olivier Chanship Award is an example here. Um, that is an Italian, uh, Italy specific award and it is worth more than our global scholarship, so we do not combine those funds. If you are selected for a named award, you will be given that in lieu of your global scholarship. That being said, if you're going abroad for a year, you can combine your year-long scholarship with your global scholarship or a named award. So um, you can get funding uh, stacked in that sense. You can also get campus-based scholarships or external scholarships and have those combined with your UCEAP funding, but we do not stack the Global Scholarship and our named awards on top of one another. So if you receive one, you will not receive the other. Okay. And these are just further details about our Dutt Neighbor Scholarship and uh, Chris Borton Memorial Scholarship. So feel free to read through this um, when you watch the recording later. You can pause this and read through these slides, but we'll move through them 
just now, Michael, so we can skip this one. Here's more information about the Chris Borton Memorial Scholarship, and we'll skip through that. And um, finally, here's just some deadlines for our year-long scholarships and an overview of the fact that we also require letters of recommendation for them. So that is an additional component um, that is not uh, part of our global scholarship. It actually isn't required now. Pardon me, it is recommended, um, but we highly recommend it. So it is a, a component of it that is not uh, present within the other applications. We'll move forward here. And just some tips here that are really true for any application, which is that a strong academic record matters. If your GPA is below a 3.0, please explain to us why that might be the case. It shouldn't deter you from applying. When I was a student, I had a lower GPA uh, my first year because I transferred majors. And I know that for many of us, maybe you've gone through a personal hardship or something has affected your GPA. Just let us know what that was and why that might be the case. Um, within your personal statement, tell your personal history, make, a, make your statement memorable. And if you are contributing to your own costs in any way, that would be wonderful to hear about. So if you have a part-time job on campus, if you babysat over the summer, um, any ways in which you are trying to fund your own program in combination with the funding through UCEAP are great to hear about. We'll keep going, Michael. Uh, and then with when it comes to a letter of recommendation, getting one from someone who knows you well is always preferred over someone with a lofty title. So if you can get it from a TA or a supervisor that knows you really well, that's the best way to move forward. And finally, spelling, punctuation, grammar, and good writing really matter, particularly for year-long awards, but I would say for any application you're going to submit, um, please make sure you have it double, triple checked by people you care about. We'll move forward here. And this is a, a slide about our post-program awards. I won't go into detail about them, but if you are curious about them or if any of these sound interesting, please take a picture of it or a screenshot now or refer back to this slide in the recording. Okay. And we're on to our Q&A. So I'll leave you with a final slide um, just about different opportunities here. So if we move on to the next slide, Michael, I'll read the last one and then we'll take Q&A. So our next steps, you're going to want to explore the UCEAP website, visit your campus study abroad office website, um, and or the how to apply section on any program page on the UCEAP website for information on application steps and deadline. Drop into the UCEAP office hours. There's a link available through the QR code on the right hand side there. And please go ahead and start your application to UCEAP. So Michael and I will be here for Q&A for the next uh, seven minutes. So you're welcome to ask us any questions you like. Beyond that, you're welcome to go uh, and follow up via email with either of us. So um, please feel welcome to now put any questions you have in the Q&A.